want to talk about code signing certificates, specifically what the heck code signing certificates are, why you need them, and frankly, kind of why they're maddening and insane. So code signing certificates are actually basically SSL certificates, uh, except in order to validate a website, these certificates are used to validate the quality of an application, specifically the owner and the past history of the application. I'm going to be a little bit more pragmatic here and say that they are actually really necessary. I don't think that as an industry we can ditch them. However, they could be done so much better. So for starters, modern applications need some way to identify the owner of the application because without that, there's it's very easy for someone to just swap the application on your operating system. And if they are able to do that, they could be able to get escalate, escalating privileges. So there's a trend in modern applications, especially Android apps and mobile apps, to give, you, to give the user essentially right out of the box an app that is in a sandbox. Uh, specifically, it has constrained capabilities. Can't write to the file system, can't access the microphone, can't access the video camera. Now that's important because you don't want, you want to give users the ability to download something from the internet uh, and not have it, you know, take all their images, upload them, you know, delete them locally and then put them up for ransom. So we need some sort of security. So we need some sort of system that's viable that we can deploy, but we don't want uh, this horrible broken system that is code signing certificates. So. Now that I've gone out of my way and said that we need them, because I knew that I know that people are going to go in the comments and just obliterate me, saying that I'm being irrational. Um, the reason that code signing certificates are a problem is the actual implementation across multiple vendors and multiple operating systems. So specifically, iOS um, and Windows are absolutely just a complete abysmal nightmare. So um, why one? They're, they cost money. So that is one of the biggest reasons, frankly, is that to ship a basic application, a thousand bucks. A thousand bucks is what it costs uh, for an open source developer who's doing this on his spare time to ship an application to go to consumers. Now you could say, oh, okay, well, you don't need to ship these code signer certificates. Uh, kind of, yes, you do. The reason why is because you're going to get 90% of your users that won't install it because the operating system itself is set up to give you warnings and errors and saying, hey, I'm not going to install this thing because it's sketchy. Now, that sounds kind of great, except the fact that both Apple and Microsoft are benefiting financially from this. They're making money. They're making money off of this broken system. Uh, and it doesn't need to be broken because we know that with other systems like Let's Encrypt, that with Let's Encrypt, you can get an SSL certificate for essentially free. The only downside is, is that you have to rekey. Like every three months, you have to rekey. Uh, but it's not that bad because what you could do is you can run their app called CertBot, and CertBot runs in the background, fetches the SSL certificate, swaps it out with your web server. That is really nice. Once you've swapped it out with your web server, you can essentially keep this key moving forward. And it works really well with code signing certificates too because if you have an evergreen app, an app that is continually upgrading, like you know any Electron app or any Chrome app, as long as you're giving a, a user an update every three months, there that key will continue to work. Um, I guess that's three months is probably reasonable. You know, an app just and you can just push the version of the app with a new key uh, until users they have to upgrade. Um, the downside is though, what if they don't use it in six months? So they would start it, and I guess the app would the uh, app wouldn't start. But uh, maybe you could build in some sort of rekeying um, into the operating system or something like that, so that the operating system can go go and, you know say, hey, listen, the app is broken, but maybe there's a new version that you could just download, and maybe you could trigger some sort of simpler mechanism to kick it off. But anyway, back to why these certificates suck. Okay, so the biggest culprit here, by far, is Apple. Um, to get started, uh, you have to get an Apple developer account, um, which is 99 bucks, I think. Okay, so that's not the end of the world, 99 bucks. But remember, we're already down 99 bucks, okay? And you're an open source developer and you're just trying to ship your app. You know, you're, you're doing this in your, this is out of love of your heart. So now you're out 99 bucks. Okay, not the end of the world. That only works for independent software developers. So if you wanna have some any sort of corporate back, uh, 
shell protecting you, a nonprofit organization, you can't use the personal developer account kind of thing. Pretty sure. Now you got to go to Dun and Bradstreet. Okay, what the, who the hell is Dun and Brad? Why, why is this other company Dun and Bradstreet now interacting with me? Uh, I okay, I don't understand this. I'm dealing with Apple. Why is Dun and Bradstreet involved? So Dun and Bradstreet are basically this corporate credit, uh, you know, uh, assurance company. So they they basically vet that hey, you're an actual entity, uh, which I guess is good. You know, if you're a developer, you want to make sure that. Uh, your users realize that you're a real person, but here's the problem. Now you got to go to Dun & Bradstreet. You got to create an account. And guess what? If you want your account the next day, 2,000 bucks, two, zero, 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 2,000 bucks to get an account for the next day. Now they do give out three free accounts. One, good luck creating it. I couldn't create a free account. Second, um, the only way, uh, oh, oh, you can create the free account. You know, I couldn't figure out how to create one, and then you got to wait 30 days, okay? Because they don't. Uh, okay, we're not going to get around to you because you're just an open source developer. Why do we care about you? Um, so now you got to wait 30 days. Great. So, or you can pay the 2,000 buck ransom. Now, and okay, is my, is is Apple getting any of that money? Because if they are, that's a little bit unfair, right? So now they're financially incentivized to not help developers. So, you know, it kind of feels like an extortion racket at this point. Dun & Bradstreet charged me 2000 bucks. Okay, I can get the, I get the $99 thing because they're trying to throttle develop software engineers. Software, you know, software engineers from just creating accounts and, you know, you want to you use that $99 so that they're not constantly creating fake accounts. Okay, I get that. That kind of makes sense. But $2,000 or a 30-day waiting period, that's abysmal. Second, okay, here's the other thing. Now that you've created this super awesome Dun & Bradstreet account, how the heck are you gonna get the, the code signing certificate to work with your apps? Uh, the, the certificate madness in, on Xcode and, and in the Apple Developer Center is, it's confusing. It is really confusing. It adds a whole, a whole nother level of complexity to your app that you don't need. If you're dealing with OpenSSL and all these other certificates or another certificate provider like SSL, it actually is pretty easy to, you know, once you get the flow and you understand how to create SSL certs, it's easy. But within Xcode, it's really confusing. There are legitimate bugs, okay? You're just going to have to trust me in this one. That when you're running these, when you actually install these certificates, uh, you get it working and then you'll reboot your operating system and it won't work. And you'll have to log in and log out. I've had to log in and log out multiple times to get the keys to work. And you have to lock and then unlock your key store on, on OS X to get it to work. That's really frustrating. You're just trying to ship your app. And now all of a sudden you can't ship because you have to spend a half of a day. I, multiple times I've had to spend a half of a day. <laughs> so it's a little bit frustrating, okay? I'm just trying to ship my app. And I, now i got to spend months waiting for the CSC to get or Dun & Brad to approve my cert. Now the certs are breaking. Okay, that's mad. Madness. That's just Apple. But at least once you get a developer account, they give you the certs for free. Okay, that's that's okay, that's fair. Okay, I'll give it to you, you give the certs away for free. So that's not too bad. And if you're shipping multiple apps, then it's actually a pretty good deal because you could ship like five or 10 apps and I'm pretty sure you could get like 10 certs for each app. That's a pretty good deal. With Microsoft, nope, ain't gonna work that way. SSL supports like wildcard certs for domains but doesn't support it for code signing certificates. I don't know. Now you want to get your Windows code signing certificate, right? Now there are two types of code signing certificates you need for your app. There is the standard code signing certificate, and now there is the extended verification code signing certificate. What is the difference between standard certification, excuse me, standard verification and extended verification? Standard verification basically means you're gonna wait forever. I don't know, it's one to two weeks, and then when you get it, here's the evil part, here's the truly evil part. With standard verification, your app isn't really verified. So what they do is they give you the key, but they wait until thousands of users install your app. While you're in this intermediate phase, they actually put up a big Arab warning message saying, uh, we don't trust, we don't know what the hell this app is. So you, you, you got this big error message in front of your user, and then they have to click this button that goes into an advanced form, and then they have to click another button that says like, install anyway. And now when something like two to 3,000 of your users 
do this and they install it and they're not reporting any bugs, then you're cool. Then you're okay. Then what they will do is they will remove that error message. I think it's called Windows Defender Program. So now they'll remove that error message for you. Okay, that's cool. So they remove the error message. But now you've inconvenienced thousands of your users. So I just happen to be lucky because my app, uh, it's called Polar, basically an offline web browser. And it uh, captures all your documents. It keeps them, you can annotate them. It's a pretty cool app. Uh, put a link in the description and you should install it. <laughs> okay, enough self plugs. But um, the, the cool thing about the app that I launched is that I was able to get it on Hacker News. Now, Hacker News is really cool because the users on Hacker News are actually kind of smart. And you can actually ask them to do things and they'll kind of do it. But if you're shipping, you know, just a normal, I don't know, just a normal app like a music player, your users probably are not going to be that sophisticated. I mean, not, they're not going to be dumb or anything, but you don't really want to have them screwing around. Like you don't want to, you just want to get the app installed. You don't want to put any hurdles in front of it. And so if you've ever worked um, inside a company, you know that you have a funnel and you're trying to drive your users through this funnel. And then every obstacle that you put in their way is just another area for them to trip up and you're going to lose users. So every step along the way, you're going to lose, lose your users. Okay. So you don't want to do standard verification. You want to do extended verification. Okay. So now you want to do extended verification. Great. What's that entail? Dun and Bradstreet. That's right. You get to deal with Dun and Bradstreet. Now there are some other ways that you could do it. Apparently, Digicert does a better way. Uh, I, I didn't go this route. They're $800. $800, okay? So now remember, you're an open source developer, and you're doing this out of the love of your heart because you love your user base, and they're forcing you to pay $800 to do this. Great. Now what you do is you think you have to do this note, some sort of notarized document at the post office. And so some, some sort of notarized document, and you, it comes to the post office. You have to go to the post office. I guess this only applies to the United States. If you're outside of the United States, I don't know, I guess good luck. And you, you know, you have to go through their, their normal process, which is done in Bradstreet, which is going to cost you 2000 bucks. So you go to the post office and you have to, you have to sign out this, you know, document saying, you know, that you accepted it and you, you notarized that you are who you are. And then at that point, I guess that they validated your address correctly and your identification and you can get this extended verification certificate. So it costs $800. Standard verification certificates cost like 250 and extended verifications cost 800 bucks. Could it be done better? Why, yes, it can. Actually, um, on Linux, we kind of have this down pat. If you want to get an app uh, distributed in Debian, uh, you basically just have to get people to sign your key. Mo other developers sign your key. And there are various ways to do that. With Snap, uh, it was actually really easy for me to create an account and get a signed signed key. So the way it works is that when you log, you create an account, you log in with your credentials, you get the key, and then the, when you go to push the app, uh, your app gets signed once you've authenticated. And so users can actually now sign the key. Um, if you just want to ship a deb, uh, if you just want to ship a dot deb, a dot, okay, so you guys are geeks, probably a dot deb is a Debian package, okay? You go to ship this Debian package. If you want to sign it, all you got to do is give the users a URL to your ASCII encoded GPG public key, and then you sign the Debian package and you're done. You just allow the users to accept the key. Windows could do that. Windows could completely and totally do that. They could say, do you want to accept this key? And then the users could say, yeah, sure. I want to accept the key. And that's all they're really doing. Because right now you can go to a website and get an SSL cert um, and buy it and install it. And if you just, you know, if they just made it, you're not, you're not slowing anybody down by verifying it's a corporation. People can still create apps. This part really bothers me because it really seems like they're, this is more along the lines of an extortion racket. Because anybody can write apps. Anybody can distribute apps. The, really, the thing that you want to do with these apps uh, is prevent them from being swapped out with the exact same app um, and give, give them the escalated privileges. Because if the app is sitting in the user's directory and it's signed and the user has permissions to overwrite it, what you could do is you could just inject yourself and replace, uh, replace that exec executable with one that has permissions into the extended permissions. You don't want to do that. 
the great thing about signed applications is that with this code signing certificate technology is that only the user with the public key to, that can sign that app can get those escalated privileges. Even, even if they have access to write as that user to that user's computer. That is definitely a big security bonus. It's just that both Apple and Microsoft have completely, completely bungled this whole process. I don't know what to tell you. I think that if you're shipping an app, especially my app was based on Electron, if you are dealing with this nightmare, uh, good luck. I'm sorry, it's, it really does suck, but there's not much you can do about it.